Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on our live stream from the Florida School of Massage community. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christina, and I'm here with Sarah Abrascato and Keith Mulford. And behind the scenes, we have Sarah Thompson and Chrissy Martinez, who I'm so thankful for, because without them, we would not be here today. And we just continue to be motivated and inspired to get creative and find ways to stay connected, even though the school is still it's still closed. And um, we're still just going through this extraordinary time, so much going on in the world. And I'm not at school, I'm, I'm rather coming to you from home. And Keith and Sarah live in the gorgeous country and currently are having sketchy internet. So they jumped in their car and they're at the massage school now and it makes our hearts happy to see the classroom behind them. And as most of you know, the school has been closed for about 10 weeks now. And we just are so looking forward to resuming classes as soon as we can. And I know we have a, a variety of listeners from all different backgrounds and some of you are very familiar with our community and of course some of you may be brand new. And I would just like to welcome you and thank you for joining us and say that yes, we are a massage school with an amazing professional training program and yet we really are so much more than that. And many of our past students and professionals just continue to come back to Gainesville. They return here for either continuing education, advanced training. Some of them are uh, doing their ongoing learning or perhaps they're teaching later on in their career. And um, some people just come back to like, dip into this world of ongoing learning of not only body work, but also the exploration of our inner world through this vehicle of touch, awareness, communication, both verbal and nonverbal. And yeah, we've just been really looking forward to this time together and just to share a really great topic with you. And we're going to have about an hour um, to be together and we're talking to two of our FSM's very favorite teachers who have a rich history in our community. They were actually classmates in 2008 and have been teaching for many years in our training program. They're also newly happily married and um, anyway more on that later and we'll have about 45 minutes to chat with uh, Keith and Sarah on this topic of body mechanics, but not only body mechanics, body mechanics as self-care. And we'll reserve time for your questions and comments towards the last 15 minutes or so. Um, so as we're talking to Keith and Sarah, feel free to type your questions and comments into the chat. And it's our, our goal to interact with as many of you as we can. And I know you're either joining us on Facebook or YouTube. And Sarah T and Chrissy will be monitoring those for us. So if you're joining us on YouTube, you can go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel by hitting that red button below. And remember also to hit the notification button. That'll give you reminders when we're doing our live streaming. And for those of you who are joining us on Facebook, uh, you can like this video and follow us there. So, all right, Sarah and Keith, here we are. And Sarah and Keith, both have a variety of subjects that they teach. Sarah teaches foundations of massage, also known as Swedish massage, chair massage. She manages our student clinic where the students practice on the public and a variety of other subjects. Keith also teaches in our foundations as well. Uh, he teaches in neuromuscular therapy, sports massage, chair massage, palpation skills. And I just couldn't be more excited to be together to talk about body mechanics as self-care and um, how fun that you're in the classroom at the Florida School of Massage. You can see the, yeah, you can see the anatomy pictures behind them, the muscle charts. Some of you know the blue room. <laughs> you're very familiar with it. And so Keith and Sarah, now, now I know we have some listeners who may be new to the Florida School of Massage community, and of course, some people will know you very well. 
So before we move into our topic, um, it would be so nice for you to just share a little bit about your background and actually what led you or perhaps inspired you to study massage all those years ago. Yeah. Either, either of you can go first. Go for it. Okay. Thanks, Christina. <clears throat> yeah. um, so uh, I was always interested in the body and how it worked and um, just kind of the function of it. And yeah. I thought it was more of like a medical interest. Mm -hmm. I like wanted to be a doctor when I was younger and everything. But um, so when I was in high school, we had someone from the Boulder College of Massage come and teach a little like half hour to our class. And I fell in love. I went home and I started massaging everybody and I wasn't listening to pressure and I was just doing my thing. Oh, and wow. um, it just became something that I really enjoyed doing. And so over the years, I, I thought about it and I went to college and I looked everywhere I was at. I looked mm. at what that, that school would look like in that town. And I looked across the country and I, I spent years looking and um, finally yeah. decided that either the Boulder College of Massage, my hometown, was gonna be the place because they had an amazing campus and facility and the classes were great. Yeah. And um, I was also looking at the Florida School of Massage because I've heard about how fantastic it was and the campus looked great and the classes looked great. And um, so I did a, a virtual tour with Bob, the first uh -huh. one we ever did. <laughs> and it was amazing. Um, I signed up on the spot, never having been to F Florida for that reason or seeing wow. the campus live. And I just knew that it was the place for me to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the Boulder College and I told them my experience and they were like, yes, that is the place that you need to go. Aww. And so it was really nice to hear that that supportive community within massage yeah. therapists, of not just like our education, it's what's the best education for you. Yes. And yeah. so moving here and not knowing anybody in Gainesville, and um, you know, that was, I don't know, 12 years years ago. Um, yeah. I love it. I just, it's mm. it's a place that really draws people in. I've mm. seen it happen. Where mm. Their intention is to take this and, and go spread it around, and that spreading happens locally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's a great story. How about you, Keith? Uh, mine's pretty similar. You know, I grew up playing a lot of sports. I really loved the body, always working out, trying to figure mm. out, like, where I was going in my life. And I never thought about massage for the longest time, never even got one. And then um, I graduated high school, ended up with the shoulder surgery. surgery. Uh, Two of them actually started uh -huh. bringing me into massage. Uh -huh. Started understanding the uh, ability that massage brought to my body, how it could just like open it up and give me some relaxation. Yeah. And also some self awareness too. Mm. So I ended up uh, actually going to buy a massage table before I even thought about going to massage school. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had my tape about 10 years before I started the program here in Florida. But I wow. actually ended up going to Colorado, where I grew up, uh -huh. and I ended up doing um, one class of anatomy out there. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited, but I was still doing a bunch of construction work at the time. So the school didn't feel like it was for me at that minute. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. left massage for about another eight years, mm -hmm. and then I luckily got founded by the school. My sister actually enrolled me to the Florida <laughs> School of Massage. Thank she you, always sister. Understood. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> she always just inspired me and knew how much I loved massage and the body, and 12 years later, I, here I sit in the blue room an instructor yes. at the favorite school my most favorite school in the world so interesting it sounds sounds like it was really both de like really destiny for both of you and so interesting how you're both from colorado but you met here and you didn't even know that about each other that's that's very fun that's a fun story thanks for sharing that so <laughs> 
for 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 the people who are listening to us and you know some of them may be unfamiliar with our program a major part of our core curriculum is body mechanics and that learning process starts in the very first days of orientation so I wonder could you guys describe um, for our listeners just like what are body mechanics Body mechanics for me are, is such a big topic. Um, I really, I learned body mechanics, of course, at the school. Mm-hmm. And it really brought awareness to me of how body mechanics plays throughout the whole day. Um, yeah. So, yeah, when body mechanics was first introduced to the school, I was really scared, um, mm-hmm. nervous, mm-hmm. and I felt like I didn't have it. I never Mm -hmm. thought I would be a massage therapist because I didn't have good body mechanics. I didn't know how to move my body. Yeah. Yeah, I think body mechanics, for me, it's such, like Keith said, it's such a broad topic because it's not just like, okay, how do I stand in a stance for a massage therapist at a table? It's how do I stand just comfortably? Mm -hmm. And then how do I move from there? Like, how do I just like sit in the car to get here comfortably? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is a mechanic of being. And so to say like we're breaking body mechanics down to just a massage therapist, it, like, you can't do that because it's in our everyday lives. Like, yeah. I want to jump. I just want to touch on a piece about that too. Is yeah, like, sure. With the body mechanics also, I think – when some people, when, when I used to hear body mechanics, I had to do it specifically to this one uh, way or this one, you know, somebody shows it, I have to do the squats just like they show it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want people to get from me is really body mechanics is how does your body move and how do you feel within your body, making mm-hmm. it easy for you throughout your whole day and supporting your body in a functional way. Right. There might be basic mechanics around it, like there's certain fundamentals to every activity and how we adapt that as an individual is really what makes body mechanics functional. Yes, I love that so much. And you're really speaking again to one of our core principles, which is we yes we are here to learn massage yes we are coming as total beginners and we're dropping into ourselves we're dropping into our bodies we're creating awareness and we're all very different we're all shaped different we come in all shapes and sizes we come in with all levels of uh, injuries and experience in life and so that's really well said i'm wondering if um for our listeners you could just go back in your mind's eye to those early days when you were both students. And I wonder if you could share what those beginning experiences were like for you in that very classroom where you're sitting now in that blue room. Uh, We call it blue because the walls are blue. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So yeah, just some of your early impressions. Keith, you already shared that for you, it was a little bit awkward, which I think a lot of us can relate to. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, maybe you could talk about that a little more. Yeah, I just really, um, it was it was really difficult for me, especially when I saw um, students like Sarah, uh, that I felt that they were floating around the room, they had ease with all these new techniques that they were learning, how to shuffle their feet, um, just how to do a lunge, how to mm-hmm. be at the table within their body. Yeah. It took me a lot of time to really understand that it's okay and like sure. being soft with myself and understanding that it's going to come if I just keep working at it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Sarah? Were you really gliding around the room? Was yeah. he correct was, in his imagination? <laughs> he is. I was totally in my element. Like, I'm a very good mimicker. So when I saw a demonstration, I was like, okay, I got this. Like, I... I had a lot of confidence in my body in that way. What was really challenging for me was finding ways to adapt for the little things like Mm. like my ankle injury or like the limitation in my toes and my feet or like the tightness in my hamstrings. Like 
those I, I had those things in addition to having that fluidity fluidity around the room and the table and I had to find in the moment like okay how do I adjust so that I can continue that Mm, and for right. me a lot of it was like how do I start to bring body awareness like that was the thing that was really challenging for me was this idea of awareness at a level that I feel every single thing that I've checked out of over the years sure yeah and like that to me, like that stillness mm. that we talk about like how to get comfortable while you sit still yeah hear your mind or just let thoughts come in and that was the most uncomfortable piece for me because it yeah. brought so much body awareness for me yeah thanks for sharing that uh, I think a lot of us can relate to that as well I know for myself I, I think I spent probably a lot of my early life not even knowing what it was like to be fully in my body and that's one of the unspoken gifts of coming to the Florida School of Massage is that I was able to just drop into myself and drop into my physical body and yes that was very scary in the beginning <laughs> for a lot of us but it gets better and better right guys yes it does <laughs> I, th I think a piece of it is it's just so unfamiliar and yeah unfamiliar yeah. in our culture too like, mm. sure and it's a life skill like if, if it were up to me I feel like everyone should go to the Florida School of Massage or massage school in general right out of high school or even as part oh, yeah. of high school wouldn't that yeah. be amazing that would be awesome i think yeah. no matter who you like if you're retired you should go to massage school just yeah. for the experience of being <laughs> yes that's true it's never too late yeah so let me ask you this now with all your years of teaching experience i mean you guys have both seen hundreds of students at this point What's your perspective on body mechanics from a teaching point of view? Like, what is it that we're trying to accomplish when we introduce students to body mechanics? For, oh. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's just, uh, it is a way of standing at a table, but it's also like, how do you find the easiest way to stand at a table? Mm -hmm. And how do you utilize the tools that you have available to you? Like the actual table yeah and the movement of the joints but like your joint moves differently than my joint so like how do you have that confidence to speak up and say okay this isn't working for me the way that you showed it and so yeah. for me as an instructor like trying to find those little details of how can I help this student where they might not even know that it's okay to speak up or that that mm. pain's not okay to go through or that mm -hmm. discomfort is not okay yeah. and showing them that there's a different way to do it and so for me I, I I watch how they move and if like there seems to be that just that little bit of I don't know I use my tracking like that wince or that ugh or like whatever it is yeah. I want to see if I can and help them move their body more efficiently just for them yeah 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 exactly that's what I'm looking for is not on how everybody moves, but how is yeah. this person going to move easier throughout their own body? Yeah. Um, do we need to bring the table up a little bit higher? Right. You know, I really, I just try to get people when I'm working in the classroom to really get into their bodies and have some self-awareness of what feels good to them. Yeah. How do they want to be at the body? My other thing I like about body mechanics is I feel body mechanics, especially for a massage therapist, means longevity. Yeah. And then when I think of longevity and body mechanics, brings it into my own life of making it throughout this world. Proper yeah. body mechanics. Yeah. Getting to the car. Right. Yeah. That's so well said, and I love what you said about awareness too because that is such a big part of our program also and you know our topic today this is the perfect segue into my next question our topic today is really body mechanics and or as self-care and as you said Keith all of us in this profession it's essential that of course we're taking care of our bodies and taking care of our health not just as professionals but also just moving through the world and can you, can you just tell us 
um, either one of you can go first, how you see body mechanics and self-care as one, as one thing. Go ahead. You want me to? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. The way that I look at body mechanics is, you know, when I wake up in the morning, how I start to open myself up and how do I get out of the bed? So when I start working throughout the day, moving throughout the day of like moving mechanically, getting this body to move, like how that becomes self-care is all of a sudden I start doing a little bit of maybe some squats within that. So yeah. I can start building, I'm looking for muscles and stuff maybe that aren't uh, activating correctly. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like see maybe in a nice way to myself of mm -hmm. uh, like seeing how the body is moving and like what else I could do to bring in the self-care. Right. Yeah. But like how how to bring in that self-care for me as a student like coming yeah. to the school like not knowing anybody feeling really shy not wanting to stay after school to practice mm -hmm. with a partner and going yeah. home and like practicing with my pillow like that was the mechanical piece of it for me sure the body mechanics of it became my everyday life standing in line at the grocery store and like playing with like okay how do I shift my body from side to side front to back like shoulders breath like playing with the position of my body so that as I'm waiting to move forward in the line I feel ease mm. and so like the same thing of like I'm picking up my room how do I shuffle from one area to the other and not just bend over but like go into a lunge and so when I take all of those pieces of fluidity from my regular life that I've started to incorporate and bring them into my massage practice it's they're the same there's no separation yeah. anymore because I've started to create that ease in both sides of my life and yeah. so it's no, for me, it's no different when I see a client and they're talking about shoulder discomfort because their body mechanics is sitting at a computer yeah. for however many hours a day, too many for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, like how, like what is the self-care that can be incorporated for them? And it may not necessarily be a functional thing for them to move away from the computer every half hour to stretch and to do so. Like, yeah. how do they in their everyday lives driving and being at home watching TV or reading a book, how do they find ease in their body that way? So, that's such a good point. And also, um, you, you just pointed out, too, how learning our own body mechanics and, again, increasing awareness and being this ongoing discovery of our own bodies and how we move through the world really allows us to be so much more observant and present with our clients and to help them um, move through their life. As you say, Sarah, for example, of someone sitting at the computer. So maybe you guys could talk a little bit about how the practicality of body mechanics and self-care carry over into other areas of your personal life as well. For example, I know at this time that you guys in our uh, socially distant time decided to start a garden as an example, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like being out in the garden, you know, it's like when I start noticing myself doing a bend over at the hips, maybe I start thinking about how do I do a squat or Mm -hmm. uh, nice little lunge right. just trying to find how my body moves a little more easier throughout the day and especially gardening I didn't know how taxing that was on the low back mm -hmm. yeah yes. yeah just in, de in, in general for me like we talk a lot about about like not shutting and not cutting and just doing and being and <laughs> so when we catch ourselves like oh my back hurts I should be in a squat it's more about like okay my back hurts how can I do this differently so that it's more functional yeah. to myself so there's also that emotional piece of like my mind is part of my body mm. and so to be able to move 
in a way that feels comfortable to me, I have to be nice to myself about it too and not say I should or I could. Mm. I'd say yeah. like, how can I? Or what would it be like? And yeah. just incorporating even those words into my my everyday more often allows me to be softer, not just with my mind, but in my body. Mm. That's so well said, Sarah, and so true that it really takes practice for all of us. We may have like a habitual way of, as you say, shooting and cutting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we, we have to undo that part of our mind, right? That's just um, what we might say as a self-limiting thought and allow our minds to open up to creating more ease. And it's so wonderful when all of these ancient practices of massage and body work are now being backed up by science. And we're learning now in the science of the brain and in neuroscience how much, our, how much um, neuroplasticity and how, mu how much ability we have to change our thoughts and affect what's happening in our body and nervous system. So thank you for sharing that. It's such a good yeah. point. Yeah, I know, I know you can relate to that too. Practice, oh, yeah. practice, practice, right? We're talking, right. About, we're talking about a way of life, really. Yeah, right. and, that's really um, what it is. Building those muscles, those mental muscles, right? right? To be less shooting and cutting and more being and doing. Just yeah. love that, it's really well said. Um, yeah, so, so both of you have shared, you know, how body mechanics can be awkward and uncomfortable and, um, you know, many of our students and actually clients too are drawn to massage or study massage because of some kind of discomfort or perhaps some kind of pain that they're experiencing in their body. And a lot of people, a lot of us think that we have to accept that we have to live with this pain, right? And what happens is, is we frequently witness students going through a discovery process in their own bodies. And so I'm just wondering if you could share a little bit more about your own uh, experiences and little ways, like Keith, you mentioned that you had a couple of shoulder surgeries that got yeah. you first interested in massage. Yeah, just some of your own personal experiences about um, how that changed for you, how, how you related to pain in your body differently after yeah. massage school. For yeah. sure. Uh, even after I came through massage school, I still had, uh, as I was coming through the school, I still was having a lot of shoulder problems. Mm. And um, I got a lot of massage on it constantly. And that kind of brought me to the piece of, getting a little bit more awareness with myself and also getting better body mechanics uh, with yeah. my shoulder. Yeah. So just like learning how the body moves a little bit better, mm -hmm. um, start understanding the movements a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is being soft on myself and mm -hmm. being okay with where my body is. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of always trying to put it up against somebody else, just being okay, like, okay, I've had two shoulder surgeries, mm. and this is the way my shoulder works. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Self-care on my own shoulder, I mean, I never thought I'd be able to do pull-ups, and I do pull-ups again. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's great. Self-care. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? Yeah, <laughs> he's constantly like doing something. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's also how your brain works too. Right. Like if you're not doing self care, you're not retaining what's coming in. You've spoken to that many times. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Like that's the way I have to learn. You know, my hands yeah. have to keep working. Like he's yeah. working on his calf right now. <laughs> uh -huh. Which I'm actually doing self care at the same time. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That could be a whole nother episode. Self massage. Right. Self massage <laughs> and open the mind. Yeah. Um, what about you, Sarah? Anything you want to share? Yeah. So this this idea of awareness and pain and a way of being, like I, for me a lot of times if I experience pain that's what I focus on. And I hear yeah. a lot of 
students with that same experience. Maybe they've checked out of that discomfort for years and coming through and mm. having somebody touch them or just doing a movement. They're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that hurts. Mm. And same thing with clients. Like, I make contact them and they're like, oh, yeah, that spot. I forgot about it. Or mm-hmm. And it, it's more about this idea of, like, okay, recognizing that discomfort and just knowing that, like, that a piece of your body telling you that you're alive mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a way to be that may not be like you're not necessarily in a place where you have to focus on that discomfort and that pain to be able to allow it to move through your body yeah and I think a really cool thing about massage is that we have the ability to bring that awareness to our clients so that they can acknowledge it and sometimes just say like, okay, yeah, I recognize it. And then it starts, like the ability for it to start to process, I think becomes more prevalent rather than it just staying there and us checking out of it. Yeah. And so having pain with body mechanics is the same thing having a surgery or an injury it's how do you find a functional way to work through that that injury or that just everyday discomfort that a lot of us experience yeah and for me it's it's the actual ability to talk about it like we have this well in my experience this stigma of you're in pain well Like you're just complaining or it's not real. I can't see it. It's not an injury. It's not a surgery. It's like not physically seen in the body. Mm. And so for me coming to massage school and being able to check into my body in a different kind of way kind of gave me permission to talk about it in a way where it gave me confidence that the person that I'm talking to, my student therapist for the day, yeah. is really just there to listen to me mm. and yeah. I can talk about that pain or not and they might feel it or not but just that space that somebody creates just by listening like mm. you don't have to be a massage therapist just to listen to somebody mm. yeah. It's, yeah you can listen to anybody and it's oh, sometimes it's just the ability to talk about how they feel in their body which can allow them to move forward and feel better in their mechanics that they live in every single day. Yeah. That's so well said. And, uh, you know, this idea of deep listening, and that is another skill um, that you're describing. That's a core part of our curriculum, not only listening to others as we sit in circle together or in the classroom together, having this radical respect for one another and our individual differences and but also this idea of deeply listening to ourselves and developing that skill and how um, we begin to ask ourselves these questions or start this process of inquiry for example like and sometimes we we have to start with what is it that I am feeling right or what is it that uh is going on or how could this be easier in my body yeah. right yeah. how 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 could i feel freer in myself and yes in my body but sometimes that freedom comes in our minds right mm-hmm. and you, you spoke to that a little bit sarah i wonder if you guys could talk a little bit more about that like how we're all individuals questioning our lives and our health and we never really stop learning um, that in massage it's it's a it's a lifelong ongoing study really yeah yeah Yeah. they call it a practice for a reason (laughs) yeah there you go yeah yeah, for for me uh, like educating myself yeah what works for me and not what works for this group of individuals like I might have something specific like this pain or discomfort and so I look at okay what are these groups of people doing but I can't categorize myself into that 
So I gather information from all different facets of like nutrition and movement and hydration and mm. um, just even like different ways to communicate and to be still yeah. and different mm. types of music to listen to. Yeah. Like all really bring for me a piece of how do I start to look at a different way of feeling better. And in massage, that's what classes can I take that not necessarily benefit my clients. They also benefit me. Mm. And one of my most favorite classes is Van Overmeyer's self-care class. I never felt so good after a, mis- a continuing education class. And all I did was yeah. like learn how to sit in a chair and <laughs> lay, like, lay on the floor and <laughs> like how to use a tube sock and a <clears throat> tennis ball. Yes. And yeah, it's, it's more about like, how do I start to find these little pieces that work for me and just listen to other people's ideas and that might work really well for them and I might try it, but not have that attachment of it's yeah. going to work for me because of this. Yes. Yeah, well said. How about you, Keith? What was the question again? Just talking more about how we're all individuals and, you know, this idea of how we never stop learning in our body. Yeah. So it's more just like, and do you have any additional thoughts that you want to share in that arena? It's not really a question per se, but just yeah. about being in this lifelong ongoing study process yeah. that we're in and what that's, that's like for you. I mean, we talk about massage, yes, as it's a really wonderful career that we're in, but then we're talking about all these things that we've learned and skills that we are developing and that are, we watch our students develop and that how does that um, continue? It's, it's almost like there's no separation, right, between life right. and massage and what we're doing professionally and personally. So, yeah, yeah. I really that I mean you're saying it perfectly, but for me it's like it's a one big journey. Um, yeah. Ever since I knew that I loved the body, but yeah. I didn't know it was going to be a massage, and then once I found this massage school, and yeah. it just opened up my journey for me, gave me a platform, showed me how to become stable yeah. within myself, and just to keep learning, keep opening up. Yeah. I am a CE junkie. I take so many different classes. I'm I'm like knee deep in classes. That's I so love, fun. I, I love to learn different stuff. And also like yeah. with this topic that we're on, you know, the, the tool really where I like to learn is right here. It's this body. Yeah. It's this body that's it's I learn how to move this body and the things that I learn there I help with other people. I pass that on. Because one thing I've started to notice, especially mm-hmm. with this journey, yeah, is that majority of us are dealing with a lot of the same things. Yes. Yeah. And so when I learn something that helps me, I like to pass that on to people. Mm, that's so kind. Yeah, it's yeah. so true. Yeah. And uh, it's it's that saying, you know, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Right. right? Yeah. I, remend, I remember one of my instructors many years ago said to me, how could this be easier for you? And that phrase has stuck with me all those years. And I love to just continually ask myself that question in all kinds of different places, like standing in line at the bank. How could this be easier for me? This, right. It's just. Yeah, just, uh, you know, honoring ourselves and creating ease in our lives. And that has this whole ripple effect out into the world yeah. and trying yeah. to keep, keep that going because life is challenging. We're all in a very challenging time right now and developing these skills, um, again, through what we say is massage, right? Mm-hmm. But it's so much more about our, our lives and our life skills and how we move through the world. So, yeah. So I just want to pause for a second. And um, the time is flying, as it always does. Mm -hmm. This is such a wonderful conversation and topic. And I want to invite any of you, too, that are listening um, to just type your comments or questions into the chat. And 
I'm going to go ahead and ask Sarah Thompson, who's listening in and behind the scenes for us, to join us and let us know if there's any questions or any comments from our viewers that you might want to share. Sarah, are you there? Sure, yeah. Um, we're getting some thanks from Lana for bringing up the shooting associated with emotions and sending love, so she's appreciating uh -huh. that. Hi, yeah. Lana. Thank you. Hi, Lana. And Lana. a hello from Erica in <clears throat> Crystal River who's saying, it sounds like a key here is asking questions about how the body feels from moment to moment. Mm. I thought that um, resonated with what we were talking about. And maybe, yes. we, and maybe moving forward, you could... If you have any advice for students who are thinking to be in the program and preparing to be in the program, given what we're talking about, what might you share with them? Yeah. Mm. Biggest thing I want to say to uh, the students that are coming and the students that have been here yeah. is to keep your bodies moving. Keep mm. moving. That's one thing I see happen with a lot of people is we get the stagnation and all of a sudden we end up sitting in front of these computers a lot. Yeah. And remember, keep the bodies moving, whatever that looks like for you. And don't judge yourself. Don't judge. Just move that body. Yeah. I would say start small. Like, um, just like first acknowledge like the things that you have done and the things mm. that feel good in your body like start there maybe that yeah. might be totally brand new for a lot of people and recognizing okay yeah I did do this today and I did get out of bed and I did sit up and like and just acknowledging the pieces that they've gone through just to be where they're at yeah and then how do they start building off of that Okay, what can I incorporate today? Maybe it's one extra glass of water. Or mm -hmm. maybe it, like, I shuffle, or I try to shuffle across the room. Or I put on some music and I just try to be myself. Or whatever I think myself might be. Like, just let go for a second. And just start to explore what it's like to be okay in your own body and start to have a little bit of self-confidence so that when you start the process of that movement there is that piece of like encouragement that happens instead of all of those I could be doing this differently or I should be at this level by now or how come this isn't moving this way it's more of like oh my gosh my big toe moved a centimeter more today than it did yesterday that's amazing mm. like yeah. because those are amazing things that happen mm. yes be so kind true yeah be kind be to yourself kind. that's always a good um advice for people just coming in and also i think another key piece is for me personally i have to really learn how to ask for help to mm -hmm. to feel really um, empowered in myself that it was okay that I felt uncomfortable or it was okay that I wasn't really feeling confident. I didn't have to fake it till I make it kind of a thing, but I, I had to really, like in order for me to move towards confidence, I had to embrace the places where I felt insecure or mm -hmm. fearful and move through that awareness first before I could cross over to a new way of thinking and a new way of being in myself. So there, there, there's this, there's this um, way that we ask for help and sometimes it's just a very internal quiet question that we're asking her, ourselves or maybe we're declaring a statement like I need help, like I don't know how to do this. And, Maybe it starts there without having to actually look a person in the eye and ask for help. But just making that statement and declaring yourself as an open person who's wanting to grow and prosper in your life. I think that's kind of one of those un unspoken pieces of massage school that it's an incredibly supportive environment where it's absolutely okay to... Mm. Um, be whoever you are in that moment. And sometimes that person can be scared and 
not confidence. Yeah. 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 I love that that asking for help. I mean, yeah, especially as an instructor, if I don't know that a student needs help, I, I don't necessarily know, like know to go over to them. And so I totally understand that piece of, I, that fear of asking for help. Yeah. And it can be so empowering to get what you're asking for. Yeah, Mary Reese and I had this conversation too where we were um, commenting or she was commenting on how it's the students who are really uncomfortable at the table, um, like you mentioned that about yourself, Keith, and (laughs) which just feel like, oh, I'm never going to get this. When they declare that at the table, amazing growth happens because we first have to acknowledge that and then we can help you. We can help you and we can help one another um, feel stronger, more confident, adapt, adjust to whatever works for your body. And so, yeah, it's that process where somebody says, I can't do this, Mm -hmm. that we get to look at it a whole different way from that point forward. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Sarah T? Do you have any more comments or questions for us? Yeah, we have another question from Dee Dee who is asking, she says, I have arthritis in almost every joint. Should I work mm. through that pain or should I not do exercises that hurt and can massage help arthritis? Thank you, Dee Dee. Great question, uh, Dee Dee. Yeah. It is a great question. Yeah. yeah. I've, every time I talk about movement, mm-hmm. I talk about if it hurts, don't do it. Don't do it. There's always a way to do something that doesn't hurt. And if that means just the smallest little movement or no movement at all and just like holding something with stillness, like that's more than just disconnecting. Mm-hmm. And so what I what I would suggest, Dee Dee, is to like, well, I learned from my aromatherapy teacher that castor oil is amazing. <laughs> Hydrotherapy teacher. Yeah. Um, so castor oil can be so good. I've recommended that to so many uh, people. And just putting it on your hands and putting some gloves on and just keeping it there. I don't know. You talk about it overnight, Christina. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about a lot of different self-care techniques using herbs and essential oils and things like that in the classroom just to support all of our bodies because, um, of course, you know, specifically to you, Didi, you're talking about arthritis, which is an itis, which is an inflammation of a joint, right? And uh, what can we do outside of massage that can also support inflammation that we're experiencing in other parts of our body and where there's pain there's inflammation so that's a very important piece and sometimes one of the other benefits of being in massage school is we get to look at the whole body and not just what massage can do but also other ways of working with inflammation like Sarah mentioned earlier having an extra glass of water, or um, I know Sarah and Keith, when you were students, you really changed the whole way that you looked at eating and diet and nutrition, and you had these dramatic changes in your own body. And I know that's a long answer to your question, Dee Dee, but it's such a good one, and one that we explore throughout the six months, and um, just in the field of massage and herbs and essential oils and self-care in general. And uh, the other thing I would mention is that another thing we teach is energy palpation skills in our program and also techniques that are very, very light and um, at the same time extremely powerful. So even if you feel like you're uncomfortable in your joints or you have pain as you're moving through the world, there are ways of learning touch and body work and awareness that require very little stress on the body. And so like Sarah says, it's a very individual process. So thank you for that most excellent question. Yeah. What else, Sarah? Anything else, Sarah T, that you're hearing and seeing in the chat? 
Um, I don't see any more questions popping in, but I'd love to hear how how have how's massage and FSM helped you both to live life on your own terms? What is yes, that that's a, a, uh. yes, that's how we like to end our conversation. And it, it's a massage school. We always talk about living life on your own terms and massage as a profession being a vehicle for that as well. And so, yeah, why don't each of you share like what that means to you, how to live life on your own terms? This one's been a little bit difficult for me lately. Uh, I've been trying to think about what I would say to it. Yeah. There's so many answers for me. Um, yeah. So living life on my own terms. Yeah. It's having control over my life. Mm. And that means control over my schedule, control over my finances, just control and then the ability to be able to do whatever I want whenever I would like to do it. Mm. The other piece yeah. of living my life on my own terms is having my wonderful wife. Aww. Aww. <laughs> um, it's a great answer, right, Sarah? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Um, for me, living my life on my own terms means having confidence. Mm. Um, I, I don't feel like I had, like, looking back, I lacked a lot of confidence in my life just uh, as an individual and the choices oh. that I made and um, things that I did. And so coming to massage school, I, I got permission to really explore who I was and mm -hmm. I became more confident in who I, I just am. Not who I want to be, but just like who, who I am on a daily basis. And, um, and then it kind of spills into my relationship and um, my confidence in my choices that I make with my diet and who I surround myself with in my community. And um, so it's just, it's really had this balloon effect for me in being able to speak confidently about something and know that it's okay to say, I don't know. And yeah. that's having confidence. Yeah. So yeah, for me, it's yeah. it's the ability to have have confidence. Mm. So wonderful to listen to you both because you're really speaking to that that principle of empowerment and what that means. Like living living life on your own terms is really about feeling empowered to be an advocate for yourself, an advocate for people you care about in your community, in your lives, and. It's that piece of self-care where the more we take care of ourselves, the more we can be really there for the people that we love and the ways that we want to contribute to our world and to the people around us. So thank you so much. I just I want to thank you both. We're almost out of time. And thank you so much for being with us. And if you're interested in connecting directly with Sarah or Keith, you can um, email them. Sarah at fsm.edu or Keith at fsm.edu. And if you, of course, if you've enjoyed your time with us today, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting that button below. And you can also share it with your friends. Click the notification button to get a reminder. And you can follow us and like this video on Facebook. And if you'd like to learn more about our school, you can visit our website, which is the Florida School of Massage.com. And you can register for our live stream or our newsletter there. And you can contact us there. And we'd be happy to connect with you and share some more information and just keep you informed about our new class, which we're hoping to start in the fall. And even set up a live call with you um, and give you a virtual tour of the school and I also want to share with you that our next live stream will be two weeks from today um, Thursday June 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we'll be talking with Dr. Ben Benjamin who's been practicing massage for 56 years if you can believe that 
And he's still so amazing. He's been nationally recognized for his contributions to the profession of massage therapy, receiving the American Massage Therapy Association's President Award, as well as being inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame by the World Massage Festival in 2010. He's a, not only is he a massage therapist, but he's an amazing teacher, mentor, exec coach, and just a leader and legend in our profession. He's also the founder and president of the Muscular Therapy Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He enhanced his practice years ago by studying with the very well-known um, Dr. James Syriac, who's widely known for his pioneering work in orthopedics. And Ben teaches all over the world and has an online school as well called the Benjamin Institute. And he just has a passion for helping people cope with um, discomfort, injuries, and overcome pain. So, and and uh, he has written several books, one of which um, mine is pretty much falling apart. I still use it all the time in my practice. It's called Listening to Your Pain. And his other books are Are You Tense? Exercise Without Injury, and then he's also co-authored The Ethics of Touch, which is an important subject for us, and Conversation Transformation. So anyway, be sure to bring like questions. It could be about massage. It could be about an injury. It could be about ethical dilemmas that you experience. It could be about going back to work. He's such, he, is su- he has such a wealth of experience and um, practical advice. So thank you again, Sarah and Keith and Chrissy Martinez and Sarah Thompson for all the behind the scenes work. We're having this gorgeous tropical rain. You can probably hear it in the background. I'm out on my back porch. And it was such a joy to be together to share this time with you. So until next time, be safe, be good to one another and to yourselves. And hope to see you really soon. Bye for now. Bye.